I'm feeling like we're going to get intellectually deep on this review. But nonetheless, let's jump into the review of this new film right now. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the channel today for another review. We're still at 2021 Tribeca Film Festival, and this time we're going to be reviewing the film God's Waiting Room, which is going to be making its world premiere under the U.S. Narrative Competition category this year at Tribeca. And yeah, I, look, when I say that, you know, we're going to get intellectually deep, I mean, look at the title, God's Waiting Room. What is your interpretation of that? Like, there's, there could be a lot of different meanings you get from it. But I will say from watching the film, you will get a lot of different tidbits that you really can uh, take and apply to your life. And uh, depending on whatever your circumstances may be, certain things may really relate to you in different ways so like i don't think no, no two one pe people are going to watch this film and actually grasp the same meanings from it or the same reflections wherever it may be uh but before we get started tyler riggs is wearing all of the hats in this film as he makes his di directorial debut he's the director the producer the screenwriter editor and actor so congratulations he did a fantastic job and really um, well, I'll say took a very um, direct approach in this film. I don't think he kept anything off the table. I, I love how his style and his aesthetic feels really raw and really personal, uh, but again, very direct. And I, I definitely appreciate that. But let's, let's, go, let's go back to the title real quick. So when you talk about God's waiting room, I think for me, uh, it's really talks about, you know, you're living you you're living and you know what is your purpose of living are you here to grow or are you more or less just kind of waiting by the wayside until your day is ultimately called um and it's you know much like in waiting rooms people do different things to occupy that time <laughs> some people sleep some people kick back some people read whatever it may be some people panic <laughs> whatever it could be but i think that in this film i think we're we're, we're getting an idea of how uh, three different people who are connected, but yet their ambitions for life are like totally different. So uh, we, you know, let's let's talk about the film here. You have Rosie, who's this young um, musician, fresh out of high school. And, you know, I, I've said it in many other reviews, that pivotal point of leaving out of high school, what's next in life for you? Uh, she has a lot of promise in her um, in her musical career. If you ask me, uh, the the actress who plays her has a fantastic voice, uh, which her performances were really really stellar throughout this film. Um, but you know, it's really the the idea of the world being so big. But where do you go? And I'll come back to her in a second. But she meets this dr local drug dealer in Jules, who is well known around the neighborhood for good and for worse but they they take fun to each other and of course that's it's it's kind of detrimental to whatever she wants to do because he being a drug dealer is kind of complacent as to what he wants to do in life he's not really motivated and he's truly trying to send her down the wrong trajectory and i will say that this dynamic between the two of them is nothing you haven't seen before the good innocent girl meets the bad influence and their wife, their life goes into a swirl. Um, and along with that, you have this character, Brandon, who's played by Tyler Riggs, uh, who is now coming back. He's fresh out after a decade of prison and he's just trying to get his legs under him. But at the same time, too, he's also trying to shake his past. He's really struggling into being uh, being you know, back inserted and back into society. He doesn't really feel comfortable. He really doesn't know if it's for him. But at the end of the day, all three of these characters are connected. I'm not going to go into that. But I will say that, like, things are a little predictable as to where they go. And, that, and like, that's fine. Because, like, in the, in, the, in the sake of storytelling, the reason why I feel like this is predictable be, is because it's maybe personal. Or it's because we've seen it so much. Uh, whether it's in film or in our personal life, that you're just thinking like, oh, okay, yeah, I, I think I know where this is going to go. 
Um, but either way, you know, the three of them are really in this dangerous trajectory of one another. It's almost like a tragic love story because, um, and it, it, it's because there's so many pull, uh, pulling of different directions that we see these characters go in ways that we kind of kind of can predict. But it's still kind of somber, like, man, you know. But I will say this too, like, you know, don't 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 let me timid you into thinking you know exactly what's gonna happen here because um there is still some very interesting developments in the stories. Um, and one that I couldn't believe happened the way it did, but like, you know, it makes sense and I and I and I appreciated it. Um, I will also say too that Rosie's dad also plays a very pivotal part into this as well. He's a single dad, uh, which makes her, and she's an only child, and the dynamic between the two of them isn't so comforting, um, and it's really driving her. Um, it's, it's really driving her down. It's pushing her out of the home. He wants her to go to college. She's not sure yet. She doesn't want to just do things the traditional way. And then you have Jules who's just like, hey, I do things this way. This is how my life is. He has an abundance of peer pressure, which some of it she's keen to. I mean, when she's been sheltered for so long and the fact that she now is becoming an adult and now she's seeing that there's other ways she can do things, she's very curious about it. And that, of course, doesn't make her dad happy, but it may also not be at her at her best interest. So there's a lot kind of going on here. And I, and I thought overall that this film um, had um, really good cinematography. The performances were stellar. The story was interesting. Um, and ultimately, the big thing from this is that you were able to really pull a lot of good tidbits um, that you can take and apply to your life. There's a lot of good dialogue and slash commentary going on in this film <clears throat> that, you know, one, one way or another you may relate to or you just may be able to, um, you know, process for your own, you know, day to day. So that's a good that's always a good feeling when you're watching a narrative film um, at film festivals. And um, as long as you're able to pull something from out of it, the film did its purpose. So, yes, again, this is God's waiting room. Uh, this, again, will be premiering at Tribeca 2021. Folks, if you're checking this out, let me know in the comments your thoughts about this film. And as always, folks, stay tuned because we got more reviews coming very soon. Big go